there. Is Maxwell House the best coffee in the whole world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by Maxwell House, the coffee that's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. A wondrous gift I bring to thee, bright as a star in a velvet sky, light as a moonbeam dancing by, and I call my gift contentment. It's raining in Springfield. It's been raining, as a matter of fact, for the past three days. In the white frame house on Maple Street, close confinement has sharpened nerves to a razor's edge, and tension mounts precariously with each falling raindrop. Dramatic, isn't it? Go ahead, Kathy. Wait a minute. Kathy, I'll trade you Indiana Avenue and the electric company for Marvin Gardens. I don't want Marvin Gardens. Daddy? Yes, Kathy? How many do I need for the B&O Railroad? Five. I hope you get a ten and land in jail. Bud. Well, she's got all the other railroads now. Bud, if you and Betty can't be good sports about it... Father, I don't mind losing, but she gets the boardwalk and park place every game, and what fun is it? Well, what do you know? Five. (laughs) All right, Bud, give her the other railroad. Here's $200, Bud. Put another house on the boardwalk. You can't put any more houses on the boardwalk. You've got a hotel now. (laughs) Well, why can't I? Father, she doesn't know any more about this game than a rabbit. I do, too. You do not. I do, too. Nothing I like more than a nice, quiet game of Monopoly. (laughs) I do, too. Rain. Three whole days, and all it does is... All right, bud. What? It's your turn. Oh. Where am I? North Carolina Avenue. Don't roll a seven, buddy. You'll land on the boardwalk. Kathy. I told him not to, Daddy. Four. Well, that's more like it. It puts you on chance. I hope I go to jail and stay there the rest of the game. (laughs) Uh, bud. Yes, Dan? It says, advance token to boardwalk. Oh, no. $2,000. But I'm afraid... Jim! Hmm? Jim! What is it, Margaret? What's the matter? Jim, come up here quickly. I'll be right up, honey. Bud! I have to go upstairs. You owe me $2,000. Send him a bill. Daddy! Not now, Kathy. What's wrong, Margaret? Jim, look at the ceiling. It's ruined. Jumping, she of it. We forgot to empty the buckets. All over the wall and the rugs. Come on, bud. Boy, what a mess. How about my $2,000? Don't worry, Mother. Father will fix it. Good grief, the whole attic. Boy, what a mess. Well, don't stand there. Do something. Uh, Open the window. Okay. Margaret, send the girls up here with some mops. Margaret! I heard you, Jim. Well, why didn't you say something? And tell them to hurry up. Water all over everything. Some mess, huh, Dad? (laughs) <laughs> just stand out of the way, bud I've got to empty these buckets Want me to help? Of course not I just brought you along to keep me company Well, all I said was Come on, bud Grab a bucket Don't stand there Well, you just told me Grab to... a bucket Holy cow The worst rain in 20 years And it has to come when there's a hole in the roof Bud, throw it out the window <laughs> That's what I did I ask you to do a simple thing like dump a bucket of water out of a window, and you can't even do that right. Well, gosh, it was heavy, Dad, and I only spilled a couple of drops. Now grab another bucket and stop talking. Did they all run... Oh, Jim, look at this place. Uh, it's going to be all right, Margaret. Kathy, stop pushing me. Well, I want to see. Now, is that the last one? I think so. All right, close the window. Oh, Jim... Now, wait a minute, Margaret. It isn't going to do any good to cry about it. I asked you to have the roof fixed. I pleaded with you. All right, girls, start mopping. Go ahead, Kathy. What is Mommy crying about? Never mind. Margaret. Oh, honey, listen to me. This rain's got us all on edge. We're nervous and irritable. 
But we can't let it get us down, can we? You want me to do something, Dad? Yes, put the buckets back where they belong. <laughs> okay. Margaret. I hate this house. Margaret. I do. It's old and it's ugly and it's falling apart and I hate every bit of it. Honey, you're just tired. I know it isn't any fun being cooped up here for three days, but... It was bad enough before, but now... Margaret, there isn't anything that can't be fixed. I've been telling you for years the house isn't big enough for us. We need another bathroom and more closets and another bedroom. We've been all through that, Margaret, and this isn't the time... It certainly is the time. Look at this place. I'm ashamed to have our friends see it. Well, we just won't let them come up into the attic, that's all. <laughs> Jim, this is not the time for jokes. I can't think of a better time. How are you doing, Betty? We're practically finished. I'm hungry. Well, as soon as we get through up here, we'll go down to a nice hot dinner. Then we'll all feel better. We're going to have hamburgers. Again? Bud Anderson, if you don't like my cooking, you can arrange to eat somewhere else. Margaret. I didn't say anything. All Never I said mind, was... Never mind, Bud. It isn't bad enough that I have to stand over a stove all afternoon. Honey, he didn't mean anything. You're just as bad as he is. <laughs> just because he's your son. Here we go. If it were one of the girls, you wouldn't be so quick to defend them. I wasn't defending him, Margaret. I merely said... The only two girls in the entire neighborhood without new Easter outfits. And you don't even care. I do care. I told you to buy them new clothes for Easter, didn't I? With prices the way they are today? <laughs> Jim Anderson, are you out of your mind? I told you to buy them, and if you didn't want to buy them, why blame it on me? Janie Liggett got a whole new outfit. Don't mention Janie Liggett to me again. There you are. All she has to do is say one word, and you fly off the handle. Because she isn't your son. My son didn't get any new clothes for Easter, did he? You didn't hear him complaining, did you? I don't want any clothes. You see? Patty Davis got a new hat and new coat. Patty. And... What good are clothes? Just because you don't care how you look. I care as much as anybody, but why throw money away on clothes when he can get a gasoline scooter for but... only... <laughs> I was only going to tell I you... I don't care what you were going to tell me. But I'm practically the only kid in the whole school... The front doorbell rang. I'm practically the only kid in the whole school... Will you please see who's at the door? From here... <laughs> Go downstairs and see who's at the door A bicycle I'm practically the only kid in the whole school Who doesn't have a joy wagon And I can't even have a gasoline scooter You think I was a kid or something Margaret There isn't anything more we can do up here, girls So we'd better go downstairs Go ahead, Kathy I have to tie my shoelace Margaret, I'd like to explain There isn't anything to explain Go ahead, girls. But you don't even know... Jim, please. I'd rather not discuss it right now. Oh, I don't know. One little accident, the whole world is coming to an end. The house is no good, the furniture's no good, I'm no good. No one said anything about the furniture. <laughs> oh, but you agree about me. The furniture's fine, but... Daddy! Keep quiet, Kathy. Betty... You and Kathleen go into the bathroom and get ready for dinner. <laughs> okay, Mother. Come on, button face. Who's a mutton face? I said button face. Oh. <laughs> Margaret. I'd better get started on the hamburgers if you and your son have no objections. You know the way Bud loves hamburgers. He'll eat them until he's sick. Bud has never gotten sick on my hamburger. <laughs> I know. Honey, what's gotten into you? I've never seen you like this before. Well, if you had rain dripping down on your ceiling for three days... But it is my ceiling. That's what I've been trying to tell you. It's as much my ceiling and my house as it is yours. Then why don't you take a little pride in it? Oh, Margaret, for the love of Pete... Dad. But I'm talking to your mother. There's a man here who wants to know if he can use the phone. Well, tell him to come in. Don't keep him out there in the rain. Would you like to come in? Well, thank you very much, son. I hate to barge in on you folks like this. Having a little trouble? No, not trouble exactly. Can't rightly call a little thing like this trouble. Just got a little water in the distributor, I think. Bud, why don't you close the door? Well, if Ma'am, you... if you don't mind, would it be all right if we left it open? I got my young'uns out in the car, and if you close the door... You mean the... your family's out there in the rain? Well, what family I got. Just Betsy and little Skip. 
But you don't have to worry about... Jim, we can't let them stay outside. Of course not. But... Mister, we're being an awful bother the way it is. I don't want Bud, you... Bud, put on your raincoat and rubbers. If and... it's all right to bring them in, you won't have to bother about fetching them. Well, naturally, it's all right. That's sure neighborly of you. Betsy! We're okay, Pa. Stick Skipper's hat on and bring him in. Okay. Ah, she's a good girl, Betsy. Only eight, but she's got a head on her. Bud, see if you can't help them. Never mind, Bud. I'll go. Jim, put your coat on. I'll be all right. Hello there, Betsy. Hi. Come on, little fella. There, I've got you. Sure raining, ain't it? <laughs> Skipper, don't say ain't. Uh, one more second and we'll be inside where it's nice and warm. Our car's busted. Here we are. Pa, Skipper said ain't. Oh, you poor angels, you're wringing wet. They'll be all right, ma'am. Been wet lots of times before. Betsy. Bud, run upstairs and get some blankets. Okay. And tell Kathy to bring down her slippers. You bet, Dad. Honey, don't you think they could use a little warm milk? I certainly do. <laughs> Betsy, honey, let's mind our manners. I can't help it, Pa. Skipper wants to know if this is heaven. <laughs> Well, maybe now Margaret won't think her house is so bad after all. Young Skipper sounds even more convincing than father. But more often than not, ladies, the head of a house is the one whose opinion you value most. And that's certainly true about coffee. Fact is, your husband is the world's greatest coffee expert. Yes, the one who knows most about truly good coffee is that man of yours. Of course, we're called experts, too. More people do buy our Maxwell House coffee than any other brand. But when you serve the coffee, there's only one expert you care about, your husband. And tomorrow, if you fill his cup with Maxwell House, we promise he'll smile and say, Wonderful. Best coffee I ever tasted. We're sure he'll say that. So sure we'll give you back your money if he doesn't. You see, no other coffee has that same good-to-the-last-drop flavor. Because that flavor can come only from the famous Maxwell House recipe. It's a very particular recipe, demanding certain fine coffees blended just so. And this recipe belongs to Maxwell House alone. No other coffee is made like Maxwell House. That's why no other coffee tastes like Maxwell House. Tomorrow, take home a pound of our coffee. Pour a cup of Maxwell House for your husband. If he doesn't say, best coffee ever, send us the can and unused portion. We'll return every penny you paid. Our address is right on every familiar blue tin. Fair enough. Then start serving your husband coffee with the world's most famous flavor, our Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. <laughs> There's one thing you've got to hand to the philosophers. They're pretty philosophical and smart, too. Take, well, take Socrates, for example. He said, if all our misfortunes were laid in one common heap, whence everyone must take an equal portion, most people would be content to take their own and depart. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? It does to the Andersons, anyway. Like this. Another cup of coffee, Mr. Matthews? Mr. Matthews? <laughs> I'm sorry. Matt, how about another cup of coffee? Why, that'd be fine, thank you. There you are. Thank you, ma'am. You know, Matt, there's no reason why you and the kids can't stay here tonight. Well... We can uh, find room for them, can't we, Margaret? Of course. It's mighty nice of you folks. And don't think I don't appreciate it. Well, then it's all settled. Betty! No, Mr. Anderson, mm -hmm. please. We've got to be in Plainville tonight or I won't have a job. Did you call me, Father? Uh, never mind, Betty. That's fine, dear. Of course, it's only for two weeks, but I promised the man I'd be there, and I reckon he's counting on me. Uh, tell me, Matt, would you be interested in a permanent job uh, around here? My husband's in the insurance business, and he knows a lot of people, and I'm sure if he talked to them... You know, it's like I used to tell Mary, if that was my wife. If there's one thing you can count on in this world, it's people. Don't know how the world would get along without them. <laughs> That's a very interesting observation, but uh, 
Look, Matt, you can't keep traveling around with those two kids. It isn't fair to them. This business of working in Middletown one week and then going to Plainville for two more... Mr. Anderson, there's one thing you don't seem to understand. We're not just traveling. We're going somewhere. But we've got to earn a living as we go, so it takes us longer than it does most folks. That's all. Well, you don't have to go to Arizona, do you? No, I suppose not. Doctor just says I'll live a little longer out there is all. Oh. Well, you didn't say... We'll just keep moving along, little by little. We'll get there. I'm sure you will. Get me a little farm, like the one we just had washed away, maybe. Understand they don't wash away in Arizona. Matt, wasn't there something you could salvage? Uh, some equipment or stock or something? Well, tell you the truth, there wasn't much to save. We had a lot of bills when the... Well, no sense bothering you folks with any more troubles. That sure was a wonderful dinner, Miss Anderson. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Say, Dad. Well, the mechanical genius returns. How'd you make out, bud? You know what was wrong? The whole ignition system was wet, and I fixed it. No. Well, isn't that wonderful? I ran an extension out to the car, and I hooked up the vacuum cleaner. Bud, you didn't take my good vacuum cleaner. Margaret? I mean... How could you possibly fix Mr. Matthews' car with a vacuum cleaner? It was easy. I put the blower attachment on it, and boy, you should have seen those wires dry out. Now, I call that real smart. I wouldn't have thought of that in a thousand years. I don't think anyone would. <laughs> Except Bud. And you don't have to worry about the vacuum cleaner either. Kathy's rubbing oil on it. That'll be nice. <laughs> I better go see that she does a good job. That's what I like about a family. Everybody pitching in and helping. Huh? Oh, better round Skipper up, Betsy. We'll be leaving in a minute. Okay. Hey, Skip! Say, I've got an idea. Why don't you leave the kids here for a few days? Oh, I don't think... That's a wonderful idea, Jim. They don't have to be in Plainville tonight. Why don't you, Matt? Well... I never thought of being away from my kids, but... Well, it won't be for long, just until the weather clears up. There's lots of room for them. This is a big house, you know. It sure is. Biggest one I've ever been in. Prettiest, too. I'm not surprised that Skipper thought it was heaven. Oh, Jim. Well, how about it, Matt? Will you let them stay? Well... Well, if it's all right with them, it's all right with me. Good. Betsy! We're washing Skipper's face, Daddy. We'll have him ready in a couple of minutes. Bring him in here, Betsy. We want to talk to you. Okay. I mean, yes, sir. Mother, that skipper's the cutest thing you ever saw. He's got jam on his face from here clear down to... What's the matter, Mother? Nothing, dear. Not a thing. Mr. Matthews is going to let the children stay with us for a few days. What do you think of that? Creepers, that'll be wonderful. We can move Bud down to the dam. All right, we'll take care of that when the time comes. And, Matt, you won't have to worry about a thing. Oh, I know that. They can spend Easter with us, and then sometime next week we'll all take a little ride over to Plainville. Daddy, look at Skipper. Oh, <laughs> Kathy, <laughs> what have you done to that poor child? It's Bud's old cowboy suit. Oh. Well, hop along, <laughs> Skipper himself. He's a real cowboy, isn't he, Betsy? He's something. <laughs> <laughs> He got into the jam, and he spread it all Skipper. over the... Skipper. I'm a cowboy, and I'm going to shoot everybody dead. I'm sure sorry, folks. Betsy, I told you to watch him. I know, Pa, but I was drying the dishes. It isn't anything to worry about, Matt. Kathy, take that silly-looking hat off him. He can't see. <laughs> I'm going to shoot engines, too. <laughs> Betsy, I've been talking to your father, and... Uh, how would you and Skipper like to stay with us for a few days? Daddy! You mean, without Pa? Shoot him dead in the mackerel. Now simmer down, Skipper. <laughs> Mr. Anderson's talking to you, too. Are they really going to stay here, Daddy? Really? Be quiet, Kathy. Oh, Betsy, please say you'll do it. We'll have such a lot of fun. Pa? Yes, honey? Who's going to take care of you? Now, just a minute. I took care of myself long before you came along. Ma said you never took care of yourself good. He'll get along fine, Betsy. And we just thought... We'd like very much to have you, dear. You and Skipper would have your own room, and you wouldn't be out in that horrible rain. Pa, do you want us to stay here? It's only for a few days, honey. But I don't want you to do something that you don't want to do. I want you to make up your own mind. I made it up. 
Well, that's fine. We'll keep going with Pa. <laughs> Gee whiz. Betsy, I'd like to explain to you. Won't do any good explaining to that child. Once her mind's made up, it's made up. May I try? Why, sure. Go right ahead. Betsy, don't you like us? I like you fine. You can play with all my toys, and I'll teach you how to play the piano. Now, wait a minute, Kathy. Let's not... Oh, but uh... I will. Oh, Betsy, please say you'll stay. We have to go with Pa. To shoot engines. Betsy... It's very cold and nasty outside. And if you stay here, we'll build a big fire in the fireplace and we'll toast marshmallows. I have to take care of my pa. But, darling... Margaret, leave the child alone. She knows what she wants to do. I want to stay here. Betsy! All my life, I wanted to stay in a house like this with electric lights and a piano. Honey. But they don't mean much if you haven't got your folks. And pa's all the folks we've got left. Well, that, uh... Takes care of that. Come on, Skipper. We better get your coat on. I'll take care of him, Mr. Matthews. Come on, Skip. Do I have to take off the cowboy suit? <laughs> no, dear. That's yours to keep. Oh, boy! Gonna kill all the engines in the world! <laughs> Daddy, do they have sidewalks in Arizona? I suppose so. Where are you going? I'll be right back. Jim... If Bud hasn't really fixed the car... Oh, I think he has, ma'am. It was just a little wet. Bud! I'll be right in, Dan. Betsy, I have a coat that's much too small for Kathy, and I'll bet it'll fit you just right. Pa? Well... It'll be an Easter present, won't it, Jim? Say, Matt, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. I've got a raincoat that's always been too tight across the shoulders for me, and I was thinking that if you'd take it off my hands, I uh, could get one that'd fit me. I was a stranger... Now, didst feed me. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Nothing. I was just thinking. Hey, Mom, what happened to the jam? It's all... Well, where's everybody going? The Matthews have to leave, dear. Gosh, what for? I was going to show Skipper... Will you get Kathy's blue coat like a good boy? I'm sure it'll fit Betsy perfectly. Okay. But, gosh, why can't they stay till it stops raining? Betsy! You sure you wouldn't want to stay here in Springfield? I can't think of any place I'd rather stay, but... We'd better be going. Betsy, as long as you won't stay here. I can't take your skates. Oh, sure you can. My daddy says they've got sidewalks. Can't take them. But if Kathy wants you to. You aren't supposed to take something unless you can give something, are you, Pa? Take them, baby. But I haven't anything to give. We'll give them our love for the rest of our lives. Matt... Well, Skipper's all set. How does he look? Betty! He wouldn't let me take the guns off, so I had to put the coat over them. Oh. <laughs> We're going to Arizona. I know, darling. Is this the one, Mom? That's it, dear. Come on, Betsy, let's try it on. Well, while we're trying coats on, slip into this, Matt. Folks, see? What did I tell you? Fits like it was made for you. They tell me it's just the thing they're wearing in Arizona. Uh, thank you very much. There. Now, what do you think of our young lady? Isn't it beautiful, Pa? It looks much prettier on you than it... It looks beautiful. Well, if we're going to get to Plainville tonight... Good luck to you, Matt. And thanks for stopping by. Won't even try to say thank you. Wouldn't know how. <laughs> Take care of your pa, Betsy. I will. And keep Skipper good and warm. Shoot a few Indians for me, Skip. Okay. And when you get to Arizona, send us a postcard. We'll write you a long letter, won't we, Beth? Bye, Kathy. Goodbye. Father. I know what you're going to say, Betty, and you don't have to. Does that apply to me as well? Sure, I'm in a noble mood. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye Skip. Bye. 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 Well, that takes care of that. Jim, if they break down again... It's all right, honey. I put some money in the coat pocket. I hope she likes my skates. Gosh, those poor kids. They aren't poor, bud. Not any of them. But, Father... They don't have a house, and they don't have a lot of money, but they aren't poor. Then why did I give her my skates? That isn't what your father means, Angel. But he said... We gave the Matthews food and coats and skates. But they gave us something far more wonderful, kitten. They gave us one another. Mm -hmm.
You'll probably buy the coffee you'll serve your family all next week. And first and foremost, you'll be looking for flavor, the most in flavor for your money. So make it a point to get the one coffee at your grocer's that's famous for flavor above all other brands, our Maxwell House coffee. Yes, take home a tin of Maxwell House and serve it to the world's greatest coffee expert, your husband. When he breaks into a smile at the first sip and tells you, best coffee ever, You'll know it's Maxwell House for flavor. Then just count all the truly good cups you get from each pound. You'll be convinced it's Maxwell House for value, too. At your grocer's, then, look for the friendly blue tin with the big white cup and drop. Take home Maxwell House, coffee that's always good to the last drop. <laughs> It's midnight now, and the white frame house on Maple Street is peaceful and quiet. The children are fast asleep, but not Margaret and Jim. They're, well, it's really Jim's fault. Like this. Jim? All right, honey, go back to sleep. Why aren't you in bed? I just went in to see if the children were all right. Are they? They're fine. Jim, if you're going to stand in the window, please put your robe on. <sighs> Now what is it? Well, I've been thinking about the Matthews, that's all. They'll be all right, won't they? <laughs> of course they will. I was just wondering if I shouldn't have put a little more in the coat pocket. What did you put in? Ten dollars. It was all I had. Jim. Yes, dear. I put ten in the other pocket. <laughs> Say, Margaret. Yes, dear. It stopped raining. It has? Isn't that beautiful? All the stars are out. When you serve a hot cereal at breakfast time, do you hear this? I don't want any old cereal. When you'd rather hear this? Mmm, good, Mommy. Well, to get your children to eat a hot cereal in the morning, get them Post Wheat Meal. Just tell them Post Wheat Meal is Hopalong Cassidy's favorite hot cereal, and they'll eat it too. Post Wheat Meal is chock full of solid whole wheat nourishment, has a wonderful nut-like flavor, and it cooks in three and a half minutes. You'll see, you'll all agree, it's the best hot cereal you ever ate. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson, with Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra. In our cast were June Whitley as Margaret, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, Norma Jean Nilsson, Howard Culver, Stuffy Singer, Sheila James, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. So until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House. America's favorite brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Now stay tuned in for Dragnet, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Enjoy exciting Dragnet with more good times on NBC.